A new study confirms more emerging evidence that high LDL is not necessarily associated with increased cardiovascular disease in all populations and all people. That's a controversial statement, right? Right off the bat, because it's, it, look, for all comers, it's pretty clear LDL correlates with increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Now that's for all comers, but the details matter when we're talking about specific situations. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I wanna talk about this specific study and put it in the context of some of the other studies that we have. The study is called Association of Coronary Plaque with Low-Density Lipoprotein Cholesterol Levels and Rates of Cardiovascular Disease Events Among Symptomatic Adults, published in JAMA Network Open. Now, a couple things important right off the bat with the title. They use the word among symptomatic adults. So we're probably dealing with a higher risk population here. So this study was done in Denmark and it was part of the Denmark Heart Registry. So people who were referred for cardiac catheterization or for heart surgery um, were enrolled in this, in this um, registry. And what they did for this one was they took people who didn't have pre-existing coronary disease. So they were referred for symptoms, but didn't have known coronary disease. Then they did coronary CT angiograms on them um, with calcium scores and followed them for 4.2 years average follow-up to see what kind of outcomes they had. And there were 23,000 people in the study, um, average age 58, and 4% of them had LDL levels greater than 190. So not a ton, but 4% of 2,300 is still a pretty big number. Now there were a number of take homes. So let's get into some of the, the data here. Um, having an LDL less than 77 by no means was protected because 50% of those people had plaque on the CT angiogram. Now, we don't know, you know, what their LDL started with, what they were treated with, how long it, how long their LDL was at different levels. So there are definitely some caveats since this is just an observational study. But 56% had plaque. Um, the next group in the 77 to 112, 51% had plaque. So that's interesting. They also, this tends to be the best group. The 77 to 112 um, had better numbers than the LDL, less than 77. Could be because they were being treated more aggressively because they were higher risk for the less than 77. Hard to say, because remember, these people did not have pre-existing coronary disease. Um, they were to be enrolled in this trial. You couldn't have had known coronary disease. Then the 113 to 154 had 52% plaque. And then you go up to the greater than 190 and they had 64% of them had some evidence of plaque. So not that much difference. 56 in the lowest group, 64 in the highest group. Still trending more plaque with the, with the higher LDL level, but not as dramatic as I think some people would think. But here's another important point. Now, what percentage of people had calcium scores of zero? So 46% of people with an LDL above 190 had a calcium score of zero. 46%, almost half. Um, whereas it was 54% was the lowest um, in the 77 to 112 LDL range. That was the lowest percentage of people who had zero calcium scores, which right away tells me if we are treating everybody with LDL above 190 as exactly the same as high risk, needs treatment, needs to lower it right now, we're, we're missing half the population that probably isn't at risk based on studies like this. So it's very interesting. The harder question is, you know, how can you determine who that is? Well, calcium score is one way, CT angiogram is another. Not everybody has access to that, but that's something we need to start thinking about. But it drives home the point, for me at least, that it's not homogeneous, right? It's definitely a heterogeneous manifestation of vascular disease with high LDL. The LDL by itself does not define vascular disease. And I think that's such an important take home point. Now, one thing that this study did very well was they looked at calcium scores and CT angiograms. So actually looking at the arteries themselves and CT angiograms can tell soft plaque from the hard calcified plaque. And non-calcified or soft plaque did increase um, with increasing LDL. So that's an important take home as well. But now let's get, get down to the event rates because plaque is important, but what really is even more important is event rates. How many people had heart attacks or cardiovascular events? So with a calcium score of zero and an LDL of less than 77, the event rate was 10 per thousand person years, okay, 10. Now with a calcium score of zero and an LDL above 190, it was 6.9. The event, rate, the event rate was lower with a zero, zero calcium score and a higher LDL, which really makes you sort of shake your head because that's so contrary to what 
um, is commonly thought of. Now, again, none of this says you can ignore LDL. None of this says LDL is completely harmless, but it clearly says that just boiling it down to LDL is high, you have to treat, is missing a lot of the nuance here, which a study like this shows. So a couple, couple other take-homes. Um, look, the big take-home again, there was no plaque in 46%, almost half of the people with LDL above 190. On CT angiogram, not just looking at calcium score, but CT angiogram, it was even a higher percentage. And the, the people with no plaque on CT angiogram and cal calcium score had the lowest event rate. So one take home, I don't mean to confuse this, but one take home is shows the importance of CT angiogram. And I'm a big fan of CT angiograms. Now, they're more involved. You need to get an IV. You need to get the dye injected. It's a longer test. It's a more expensive test. Your heart rate has to be regulated. Um, not all insurance companies are going to cover it. Um, it's, you know, maybe hard in some institutions to get it ordered, but with all those caveats and with data like this, like this paper, it's clear that CT angiograms give you more knowledge, give you more data, and it looks like can predict event rates um, even better and can predict risk of, of developing cardiovascular disease even better and help personalize treatment. And then there's also the radiation dose. A calcium score has around a, a one millisievert radiation dose. CT angiograms depends a lot on the institution, on the scanner used, on your heart rate, and, and on your size, how big you are. Um, but many institutions can do it for two millisieverts, the equivalent of two calcium scores. Maybe on the higher level, it's up to five. So, you know, you and your clinician are going to have to judge if that's worth it or not. But it's clear it gives more information. The question is, is it worth it? For me, a lot of the times in my patients, I think it is. But again, case by case um, basis. And I like to combine data like this with uh, data from a study we did a video on earlier, clinical significance of zero coronary artery calcium in individuals with LDL cholesterol greater than or equal to 190 milligrams per deciliter, the multi-ethnic study of atherosclerosis, which basically showed that, again, over half of the people um, had no progression of calcium score. They had a calcium score at baseline, and 10 years later had a calcium score that was still zero in half of the people with LDL above 190. So sort of consistent numbers, this right around 50% number is really interesting that, 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 that they're pretty consistent between the two studies. So look, it's not a, a foregone conclusion that LDL does not matter. It's not a foregone conclusion that we can ignore it. There are clear general population data associating higher LDL with higher risk of vascular disease. But there's more and more evidence that it's not uniform, that there are pockets of people who don't develop vascular disease despite what is considered a very high LDL. So now the next question is, why is that? Now the next question is trying to figure out who does and who doesn't need to worry about their LDL. And one hypothesis is that it depends on the reason for the elevated LDL. Is it familial hypercholesterolemia? Have you had elevated LDL your entire lifetime? Versus is it because of a dietary change? Is it because of some specific physiologic reason that is potentially beneficial or potentially not harmful? All speculation, but this is where um, Citizen Science Foundation uh, is doing the study led by uh, Dave Feldman and others to, to study exactly this using a CT angiogram, luckily. And as this latest study shows, the power of using CT angiogram. It's probably not going to answer all the questions, but it's going to set the stage for some baseline data and future directions. Because I think it's clear that as we get into this realm of personalized medicine, of being very individualized in our treatment, recognizing that people don't fit the, the norm and the average, and nor do we want to, because the norm and the average is following an unhealthy diet and metabolically unhealthy and probably chronically inflamed, right? You don't want to be average in this country or in this world now. So take going away from guidelines that look at the average to a specific what does it mean for me? What does it mean for the patient in front of me? This is where we're headed. And studies like this kind of help get us there. So don't make any basis of whether you should or you shouldn't treat a high LDL based on this one study alone, but definitely have this in your brain as to say, okay, we need to look at this a little more carefully, a little more thoroughly. We have guides at dietdoctor.com about LDL hyperresponders, about is LDL harmful, um, about cholesterol in general, about low carb diets and cholesterol. So I really direct you for more detail, more evidence-based detail to go check out those guides to really round out your knowledge. I hope this was helpful. I get excited about these studies. I hope you do too. Um, if you found it was helpful, please click the thumbs up and subscribe button. And that way you'll get updates from all of uh, all our future updates here at Diet Doctor News on YouTube. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.